Hello, and thank you for stopping by. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you are not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when new videos arrive. I was looking at an article that came up on Yahoo Finance, and I noticed a name that was very familiar to me. But it was very familiar because I know this person from something other than what most America knows this person by. And the guy that I am talking about, his name is Kevin O'Leary. Most people know Kevin O'Leary from the Shark Tank. I know Kevin O'Leary from a small computer company in Minnesota. My ex-girlfriend used to work at a company called MECC, M-E-C-C, -C, in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, or Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Then it became the learning company. Then SoftKey bought out the learning company or swallowed up the learning company, and the person that owned that company was Kevin O'Leary. Now, I'm not going to get too much into detail other than the fact that my ex-girlfriend ended up losing her job, ended up losing her 401k plan, plus her severance package was gone when the learning company and SoftKey was sold to Mattel. Kevin O'Leary was the owner of that company or the CEO. At least he claims to be the sole owner of that company. Now, I know this because there was a time when I lived in Minnesota for a short time. And my ex-girlfriend worked for the learning company under Kevin O'Leary. Now, when Kevin O'Leary sold the learning company slash soft key to Mattel, Mattel acquired a 60 some million dollar debt that was owed to creditors from soft key slash learning company. And when the Mattel group bought this company, they ended up going in the crapper the first season or the first um oh what's it called uh, in the stock market it's when you are uh, when you have stocks and uh, first quarter that's what it is you have to forgive me i'm a little slow on some stuff but the first quarter of mattel after buying the learning company, when the investors found out that the learning company owed 60 some million dollars in debt, they went down. The stocks went down. It rebounded, of course, but I think the reason Mattel bought the learning company slash soft key was because the learning company had came up with a video game called the American Girl series. Now the learning company which used to be Mac. Mac designed Oregon Trail, which was a very good uh, learning, uh, digital learning tool for schools. And a lot of people played that when it was on uh, uh, two, when it was a 2D uh, single player uh, video game um, that was used with uh, the old computers with the big, huge floppy disk that had the donut hole in the middle. And if anybody remembers those, then they know what I'm talking about. This was pre-A drive, floppy disk. Now, the reason I mention Kevin O'Leary is because he said that uh, he doesn't think that we should be giving stimulus checks to people that are still working. And... I agree with that. If you are working and you're making the same amount of money that you are making before the COVID and you're not hurting, you do not need a stimulus boost. Here it says Joe Biden, 
President Joe Biden has proposed sending $1,400 checks to every eligible American as part of his massive $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package. Now, Shark Tank investor and chairman of O'Shares EFT, Kevin O'Leary, told Yahoo Finance Live that that's not the best use of taxpayers' money. We're just sending everybody free money from a helicopter, he said. That's not a great idea. Well, Kevin O'Leary can say that because Kevin O'Leary has over $200,000 worth of watches that he's got in his collection. Some are probably worth sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. And that's fine. If you work hard for your money and you have not screwed anybody over, hint, hint, and you want to take your money and buy something that you like, because an item is only worth what somebody will pay for it, that $70,000 Rolex is not really worth $70,000 unless somebody will buy it for $70,000. Now, instead, O'Leary said the U.S. government should only send checks to the unemployed and the poor and to pour more money into ramping up vaccine, vaccine distribu distributions. So he's saying to send it to the unemployed and he's saying send it uh, ramping up the vaccine distribution. Now, I understand and I agree with that. If you are out of work and you are making unemployment money while you're out of work, you're not making enough to cover your debts. Now, when you get a raise, do you live like you just got a raise? A lot of people do. They get a big old fat check and they start taking that check and they start skyrocketing their spending. Now, there are people that are on disability, SSI, Social Security, Veterans Benefits and stuff like that. When you're making under $1,000 a month, you barely have enough money to pay your rent and your bills and your groceries. Then you're broke. Yes, I think that little bit of extra money will help when it comes to that. But they are not really hardshipped out of uh, being able to pay their bills because they are getting a check every month. It's guaranteed while the Social Security office is still making money, it is guaranteed for them now. Kevin O'Leary also said, I don't know why we are sending checks to people that are already employed. And, and that's true. If you're making money, if, you're, if you did not lose your job during the coronavirus, if you did not get a pay decrease during the coronavirus, I believe that you should not get a stimulus check. Now, you can say, oh, I'm hurting for money as an excuse. Yes. If the coronavirus had not hit, would you be asking for extra money? No, you probably wouldn't. That makes no sense to me, he said. The deal should be this. If you are displaced by the pandemic, we will send you a check because you're unemployed. Yes, that, that's good. If you are unemployed, yes. O'Leary cautions that the U.S. is in danger of putting too much stimulus money into the economy and risking horrific, horrific inflation. Now, I don't really understand that. And if you do, if you understand what, what he means by that, put that in the comment below. I would love to hear from you on that one. I don't understand how putting too much stimulus money into the economy can be a way of horrific inflation because I'm thinking that you're putting money into the uh, into uh, well unless you're putting too much money into the economy and it's causing the price of the goods to go up because now they think oh you got extra money we can charge more for the product now we have too many airlines in terms of capacity because businesses oh I'm sorry, let me back up. He also said he's not a fan of industry bailouts, including the beaten up airlines. Now, if you are mishandling your funds and you go broke, that is your fault. 
especially if you could have avoided doing that, like when we bailed out Wall Street and we bailed out the big banks. No, I think we should not have done that. Auto industries, it's possible if they went belly up and it was no fault of their own. They, yes, they should have because it kept a lot of people in work. But if you've got banks that are mishandling money and giving out major pay raises and they're also giving out loads and loads of things that they should not be giving out, then I believe that you should not get bailed out. You should have to declare bankruptcy. That's just me personally. He said that when banks, or he said when the airlines get beaten up, we have way too many airlines in terms of capacity because business spending will be down somewhere between 20 and 25% for years to come. Just giving unemployment checks to the employees, they're highly trained, they'll find new jobs in the digital economy. The airlines are good. The airlines are very good at going bankrupt. They do it every 10 years, so it's just fine. Stop spending money there. O'Leary recommends a similar approach to struggling restaurant industries where 4 million jobs have been lost during the pandemic. Now, are we talking about restaurants that are the mom and pop restaurants that are on the corner that make that really nice chicken fried rice and uh, a shrimp fried rice that you really, really like where they have old school uh, Chinese uh, and old school Japanese and Taiwanese and Korean families that have been there forever that are making this food but once the pandemic hit they couldn't afford to open back up anymore because they didn't have the funds are we talking about that kind of restaurant or are we talking about the great big huge like Timpanyaki Grill or uh, various other restaurants that can go out and then start back up because they have the capital to do so I'd like to take care of, take care of everybody that works in a restaurant that's unemployed. I do not want to bail out every restaurant owner. A better way to spend on restaurants would be to spend more money on the logistics of getting the vaccine out. See, O'Leary wants to put the vaccine out. That's his way of dealing with it. Oh, we'll do the vaccine. We'll do the vaccine. Okay, well, the vaccine's not going to pay my fucking rent. Sorry to use that language, but that's the way it is. If I am out of work and I have not made any money and I am backed up on my rent two or three months, the landlords need money to cover their bills. I need money so I can pay my rent so the landlords can pay their bills. Getting a vaccine is nice and it'll help, but it's not going to pay anybody's bills. A $1,400 stimulus check, if used properly, will do that. Because he says, because I guarantee you when people feel safe again, they will go to restaurants. It's an industry that bounces back very, very quickly. Yes, but how long will it take for people to feel safe? You have a lot of people that think the vaccine is going to make them sick. You have a lot of people that believe that the vaccine was put into public use as a way to get people that are not sick to become sick so people can be making money off of the vaccines and off of the treatments for whatever ails you. That's like I watched an episode of Bull last night. And in this episode, a person had created or found a way to create the cure for Parkinson's disease. Well, the company he was working for decided to shelve what he had done and then let him go. Why? Because they don't want the cure. You never want to find the cure. Now for small little bitty things, yeah, sure, we'll find a cure for that. But cancer? Are you nuts? They would be stupid to find a cure for cancer. Why? Because the treatments and the vaccines are making them way more money than the cure. You cure somebody one time, but if you keep them sick, you will treat them for the rest of their life. And how much are the treatments? Loads and loads of money. O'Leary said he currently has restaurants in his portfolio of business 
that are going bankrupt amid the pandemic, but that the ones that are going to survive will be the ones that should come back because they're still relevant. So I guess O'Leary thinks that restaurants that are going bankrupt are not relevant. It's like if you can't afford to weather the storm, you don't need to be here. Fuck you. That's kind of what O'Leary's saying, and that ain't right. Some states, including Delaware, Iowa, and Massachusetts and New York, recently deemed restaurant staff as essential workers, bumping them up to the list for those eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. And yes, they are kind of essential workers. You have people that rely on takeout, people that can't cook. Now, I know how to cook, and I'm really good at it. I'm not Chef Gordon Ramsay good, but or Wolfgang Puck good, but I'm good. I know how to make a really good steak. I know how to make pasta without making it too mushy. I know how to do a boiled egg. I even know how to cook an egg in the microwave without it blowing up. But I do order takeout sometimes. And those people are risking their lives every time they go to your house to deliver something because they are bringing food to you. And some people that answer the door don't wear a mask. I do. You don't see me with a mask on now because I'm doing this video and I'm in my apartment. But when I step outside my door, I go and I put a mask on. I go out my door. Then I go do my stuff. Then I take the mask off when I get back inside. If I'm outside by myself in the cold or in the open air, I will not put a mask on. But I will have the mask with me so when I go inside, I can slip the mask on before I go into the grocery store and the various other stores that I shop at. Now, the whole country is waiting to get vaccinated, at least the ones that want the vaccine. And we can't do it. And we're sending checks to people that already have jobs. In the meantime, it's just crazy. And yes, I think that is crazy to send a check to somebody that doesn't need it. But the cost of living is up. The checks that you get are not going up with it. Cost of groceries are higher. The dollar, the cost of groceries is higher. The dollar is shrinking. Our dollar is not worth what it used to be. I remember not even 30 years ago, you could take $5 and buy enough groceries to last you maybe a week, depending on what you're buying. You can find stuff really cheap at the stores. And that's just uh, not even 30 years ago. Now, it's not like that. If you have something to add to this in the comments below, do so. If you'd like to give me a thumbs up, hit that, hit that like button. That's fine, too. Also, if you want to hit the subscribe button, please do that. Hit the subscribe button. I'm going to let you go on this note. Remember, make tomorrow better than yesterday by doing the very best we can today. Have a good day, America, and all points beyond.